Secretary of Industry, Mary Pickford. Thank you. Well, when you get a chance afterwards, you can come down and take a little bit of a closer look. But you may recognize me. I was a very famous, still am, silent film star. So let me explain. I wasn't born Mary Pickford. Oh, no. When I was born, my name was Gladys Smith. Not as exciting, but I'll get to how my name changed. I'm better known as America's sweetheart, Mary Pickford. I was born in Toronto, Canada, just like my friend here. And I was born in 1892. I had a brother and a sister. And when I was only six, very sadly, my father died from an accidental blow to the head and left my mother and the kids, us, with no money and no income. Well, my mother began to take on boarders, which is another name for someone that rents a room out of your house. And she also did a little bit of sewing work. And uh, one of the boarders suggested that since we kids were so cute, we should get into doing theater. Well, my mother was a little suspicious of theater folk. She thought that maybe they didn't have the most uh, high character and high standards of living. But she went down to the theater anyway, and she met with them. And she actually found out that they were pretty decent people. So she let us have a hand at, at doing some acting. Well, wouldn't you know it, before a few weeks had gone by, my sister Lottie and even my mother, we were all involved in a production at the Princess Theater. We earned $8 a week. That wasn't too bad back then. I loved the stage, and from very early on, it was clear that's where I was meant to be. And the newspapers would write things like, Baby Gladys is a wonder. And over the next nine years, I would appear on stage and traveling shows. We traveled all over the United States as a family. Eventually, one of the directors suggested I change my name. Well, Pickford was a family name, and my middle name was Marie. Therefore, we chose Mary Pickford as my new name. After I started acting, of course, it became difficult to go to school full time. And uh, my sister and I would have to get ourselves ready for school when my mother was working. And we were late a lot. And our teacher, Miss Adams, was not very fond of tardiness. She said a really mean thing once to try and scare us. She said, the next time you're late, the devil will send a big black wagon for you. And you'll never see your mother again. So <laughs> that terrified us, and I had nightmares for weeks. And eventually, it just became too much to try and perform, travel, and go to school. So we dropped out of school, but my mother homeschooled us. So I did continue my education. And eventually, I began appearing in movies called Flickers, which are silent movies, about 12 minutes long. And the actors would pantomime. They would act out the action with no words. And every few minutes, you'd see what's called an intertitle, where a card would show up on the screen, and it would explain parts of the story that we couldn't act out. And if you've ever been to Disneyland on Main Street, when you go into the arcade area, they have something similar. Um, these little flickers used to be shown in what were called Nickelodeon theaters. You could put a little coin in and you could see a few movies. Um, you may even have seen those yourselves. And a lot of times they would take these stories from classic literature. One day I walked up to the American Biograph Company and asked for an acting job. A gentleman named Mr. Griffith arranged for a screen test, which is where they bring you in, put you on film, and see how you look through the camera. Well, he thought it looked pretty good, so he offered me $5 uh, a day. And I said, I'm a professional actor, and I've been doing this a while. I want $10 a day. Keep in mind, I was probably only 16 or 17. And he agreed, $10 a day. I worked very hard, and I became a star. I did over 80 films. And eventually, I went on to another company, the Lemley Company, and I made another 35 films before I returned to Mr. Griffith. Eventually, I made feature-length films, which are what you see in theaters today. And by 1916, I was making $2,000 a week. Most families made $2,000 in a year. I had become an international success. At the age of 24, I had become the world's most famous and popular woman. Not just America, but throughout the entire world. I was petite with long golden hair, and I usually played poor girls, you know, rats to riches types of stories. Girls of common birth who might marry wealthy or wealthy people or wealthy family. People thought of me as their friend when they went to the movies. They could identify with me. I did one film called Poor Little Rich Girl. I was 24, but I was playing the part of a 12-year-old. We used this really cool trick 
where we made everything on the set, the furniture, the other actors, look really big so that I would look really little. In fact, today they still use that in movies like Lord of the Rings and the Harry Potter movies to make some actors look really large and other actors look really small. So, that was another thing that I was part of that still is around today. Eventually, what did they add to pictures? Sound, yes, and I was quoted as saying, adding sound to pictures is like putting lipstick on the Venus de Milo. <laughs> you don't mess with something that's already great, but they did anyway. So I started making feature films with sound, and you might be interested to know that I was one of the founding members of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, which is the organization that does the Oscars every year. And then my mother died in 1928, and I was so sad I walked into we're not done yet, guys. You already had you already had your brunch. You already had your brunch. <laughs> I walked into a salon and I chopped off all my curls because I was so sad. In 1929, I was in the first talking picture called Coquette, and you can see there's a picture of it right over here. This is one that's in color here, and I won an Academy Award for my performance. Eventually, Douglas Fairbanks, my second husband, and I were divorced, and I named another gentleman named Buddy Rogers. We adopted two children, Ron and Roxanne, and I had a long, happy marriage of over 40 years. Later on, I quit acting and started doing charity work, and one author even called me the woman who made Hollywood. I died on May 29, 1979, at the age of 87. Thank you.